Pedophilia, robbery, rape, slave trading, terror, and torture. These are the things you read about when you read Muslim sources on the life of Muhammad. Sadly, Muslims don't read their own sources. They blindly listen to their leaders and apologists who tell them that Muhammad was the most wonderful man who ever lived. Since Muslims will never hear the truth about their prophet from their leaders and apologists, and since nothing you can do will ever convince them to open up some books and read about the man they're trusting to guide them to paradise, the task falls to us to tell them the facts about Muhammad. Rita asks, Sir, can you please give me the verse in which Muhammad beats a man for money? I've wanted to show your videos to my Muslim friend. Well, Rita, I didn't say that Muhammad beat a man for money. I said that Muhammad tortured a man for money. And the torture was much worse than a simple beating. Let's read the passage. The context is the Battle of Khaibar, where Muslims launched a surprise attack against a settlement of unsuspecting Jews. Muslims defeated the Jews and wanted their treasure. A Jewish man named Kanana knew where the treasure was hidden. Ibn Asak, page 515. Kanana ibn al-Rabi, who had the custody of the treasure of Banu al-Nadir, was brought to the apostle who asked him about it. He denied that he knew where it was. A Jew came, Tabari says, was brought to the apostle and said that he had seen Kanana going round a certain ruin every morning early. When the apostle said to Kanana, do you know that if we find you have it, I shall kill you? He said, yes. The apostle gave orders that the ruin was to be excavated and some of the treasure was found. When he asked him about the rest, he refused to produce it. So the apostle gave orders to Al-Zubair ibn al-Awam, torture him until you extract what he has. So he kindled a fire with flint and steel on his chest until he was nearly dead. Then the apostle delivered him to Muhammad ibn Maslama and he struck off his head in revenge for his brother Mahmud. So Kanana knew where the treasure was hidden, but he refused to tell Muhammad. Muhammad ordered one of his followers to torture Kanana, and Al-Zubair used flint and steel to light a fire on Kanana's chest. This means, of course, that Muhammad affirmed brutal torture as a method of extracting information from one's enemies. Now, we could go into more detail and read about Muhammad taking Kanana's wife, Safiya bint Huye, for himself after the Battle of Khaibar. Safiya's father, Huye, was beheaded by Muslims for opposing Muhammad. So Safiya married a false prophet who had executed her father and tortured and killed her husband. I guess she decided that being married to Muhammad would be better than being passed around by his followers as a sex slave. We could go into that, but I was only asked to provide a source on Muhammad torturing a Jewish man for money. For you fans of justice, however, I'll point out that there is an element of poetic justice in this story, because another widow at Kaibar, Zaina bint al-Harith, whose husband and father, like those of Safiya, were killed by Muslims, didn't marry Muhammad. Instead, she offered to cook him dinner. And Muhammad tactical genius that he was, accepted an offer of a home-cooked meal from a woman whose family had just been slaughtered in the name of Allah. Needless to say, the food was poisoned. Muhammad spit most of it out, but the damage was done. The Prophet of Islam spent the next three years in pain and eventually died, wallowing in freakish misery from the internal damage caused by the poison. Muhammad suffered far more than Kanana did. What's the moral of the story? You reap what you sow, Muhammad. You reap what you sow.